just like a 25% FTE need for XYZ, then we might be able to fill that gap. It could be bigger than that, but I guess I'm just asking you to think about it in that way. Right, yeah, so I mean, the way I thought about it first, again, just again, coming in a little bit on the tail end, was one with the data collection. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the places that I was going to pull all the pieces of the things that pop ended up populating that spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because some of it was coming from admissions, academic affairs, the, the grades and stuff like that, the baseline mm -hmm. information. You know, so some of it, I, I would say maybe 8% I had, the rest came from academic affairs and so on. That was just challenging to kind of piece that together because again, as I mentioned, the Dean sort of made the point like, we have our whole class, right? You know, so I'm taking that information from a roster and then pulling out the 300 and something mm -hmm. over recipients and making sure that I'm getting just that and so on and so forth. So I think that that had some challenges. So having, having somebody to either assist with that, and I think that that's what Michael envisions the grant for assisting with on that side, just the data, mm -hmm. gathering up the data. Mm -hmm. My more recent conversations with the financial aid that Director Dr. H said, I'm getting the sense that there needs to be somebody else to help manage the distribution of the funds, whether they interface with the bursar's office, university, or so on and so forth. That's the sense that I get. Mm -hmm. Because essentially this is this is the largest award that the college of medicine has ever received. Mm -hmm. You know, and parceling out that distribution is as a dean, you know, um, implied about various lenders and stuff mm -hmm. was not easy. Mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling that they kind of got over got over that hump, and I need to get an assessment now from the financial aid director as we go through years two, three, and four mm -hmm. over the next few years, you know, is that help still needed? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, I don't have a good feel for that as mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. You know, my sense is yes, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because we still have you know, three classes, you know, that will be getting the award for the next few years. And you guys are doing disbursements twice a year that aligns twice. with your academic calendar. Mm -hmm. My guess, though, is that once it starts, it's like an ongoing process, and as soon as you finish the fall, it's time to do the spring. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because okay. the students, they get packaged, you know, early in, early in the fall, they're getting their well, they should have gotten their refunds and things like that. Now they should be able to go in and see what's been applied to their account, you know, and then pretty soon that's that process is going to restart late fall so that they get their refunds in January, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, what about student level support? So it sounds like you have, you meet with the, the M3s and so and so, you have the academic counselors. Is there, um, and I'm asking this from the perspective of I know how other schools have, are trying to or have staffed their grant, and so some have like a scholarship coordinator, some have a financial aid person, some have like a student liaison. So I'm wondering if you, if based on how you guys have have formed the program and how you function as an or as a as a college of medicine. Um, is there is that a potential place? And that's not something that we could provide. But if 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 you got that cover, you may have like you may have the bandwidth to do some of these other things. So that's kind of trying to get your thinking about that kind of thing too. Yeah, I think that would be more of an internal thing, internal staffing. Um, it's, it's interesting you pointed out because we had a town hall with students recently, um, and a couple of them brought up the fact that they thought some of our offices were a bit thin. Mm -hmm. in terms of, of, of staffing and that it, it would be nice to have more than one person or two people managing all the emails that come in from the students when they're preparing for mm -hmm. their application to residency season and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So those are some things I think we as the assistant and associate deans have to discuss directly with the dean mm -hmm. and say, okay, we think you know an additional person may be helpful here or there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even on the level of an, another assistant dean in a particular area also. Mm -hmm. to be able to, to handle some of those student type services that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but the, the short answer would be yes. <laughs> yeah, so so is there like a there is there a person that is everybody's person? Like the student is going to a crisis or whatever, do they have like an assigned faculty member or is there someone on staff who's like the go to person that then helps them coordinate that? Like how is that being handled? I know you guys are doing it but 
Right. Um, so if if a student is in a um, not academic type crisis, mm -hmm. um, they would either come to myself or the program director who's on to me, Ms. Anil. Mm -hmm. That's typically what they come to in terms of student affairs because student affairs I interface with the the student health center as well as the university counseling center. Mm -hmm. So typically they'll start with me. Okay. Uh, how many hours and, a day and, do you work? I mean, I don't count them <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I don't count them anymore. Good answer. <laughs> um, academic related things, they tend to go to Dean Ford first as a senior. She's a senior associate dean for academic affairs. Okay. You know, so so if it's, you know, I did poorly on my exam, blah, 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 they tend to hit her up first. Now, if it's like I did poorly on my exam because I just found out that my cousin was killed in Chicago, I tend to get one back. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. those types of things as we try to, you know, maneuver. And so, what do you do with them? Like, do you like you counsel them, you mentor them, or do you I, send them out? I'll, I'll, par I, I'll parcel things out. Okay. Um, you know, we use the university counseling heavily. Um, as Dean, Dean Mighty mentioned, um, they're almost finished hiring that outside person that mm -hmm. is, will be just for the medical students. We currently do have a psychiatrist in the student health center that's actually just for medical students mm -hmm. and we're adding this additional person. So I'll do some initial chatting and get in a feel for, because some folks it's on the level where I can, we can have a conversation, we can monitor them and, and have a little game plan, mm -hmm. and then others is, I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist is beyond me, mm -hmm. and, and I say, listen, you, you, you need something more formal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, okay. then I, and I can make the appropriate referral. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is, I'm asking these questions because as a psychologist, I think the more those kinds of, the more competent students have around those kinds of supports, the more present they can be in a wraparound service around financial aid. I mean, if you're constantly hungry, constantly you're depressed and you're not really dealing with it, then you can sit through a required thing and, you know, it's, it, you didn't take any of it in. So I'm just trying to think about are there opportunities to learn from how other schools are, are handling that? And at the same time, the other thing that that is, is true for DIR, which is a small company, we wear a lot of hats, you know, and we don't parse out a lot of things for many reasons. Um, but as we've gotten bigger, we're just like, look, we don't have the capacity to do all of this. But figuring out how to, to to do that in a way that we all have the confidence that we're we're passing off, and it's not going to come back to us. Um, that's been a learning experience, and so I, I'm my assumption is that when you are wearing many hats, like all the HPMS folks who are doing this work, sharing a, across the schools about how they're managing and leveraging these things, I think will be really useful, um, and it really will only inform. I mean, I'm not only informed, but it, I think it has a, it can have an impact on the students. Yeah. Right. Fair. Um, I have a yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, um, I was I am I'm sort of wondering about the culture of Howard because I was listening to the many hat wearing and the no, we don't really need this, but yes, maybe we could use that. And what do you what are your thoughts on us, this 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 effort making changes now not imposed of course but you know influencing change within at the institutional level and so I'm kind of wondering about that and I wasn't sure where I could ask that or when but since we're you know <laughs> Just, let me try it out on the Grenadian <laughs> Connection. Let me try it out. <laughs> we went to school, the same high school together, and then this connection. Um, be careful how I answer. I guess. Can we be on the way? Institutional way. Yeah. Yeah. This.